We've had good news and bad news this week. The bad news is we had a storm and it knocked over the horse chestnut tree, which then landed on my greenhouse. So my greenhouse is no more. It's an ex greenhouse. And the good news is this means it's very easy to collect the conkers because they're all laying on the floor next to the greenhouse. So I thought we'd have a go at doing some conkers in ink and wash. But I've decided this time to do it the opposite way round to most of my tutorials. So doing the painting first rather than the drawing. And I think this way it quite loosens up your drawing. Um, so not really doing too much drawing other than with your paint and then putting a very loose ink drawing on top. So to begin with, I've mixed up some colours, um, a yellow on its own. I've mixed up a light green with green and yellow, a darker green with green and red and then a brown which I've added some red and yellow to to make it a bit warmer and a bit more orangey as you can see on the conquer skins there. Make sure for this that all your paints are the same consistency. You'll see that I added the same amount of water to each little tray there. I'm using the brush that I'm using for doing the actual painting is a size six with a nice tip and that's a sable brush and I'm using my Bokken Fundit block paper. So don't just draw these as a flat object. Look at the way the curves are going. Look at the way the lines are going. They're actually spit, split sorry, into four quarters, um, which is where you unpeel them to get the conkers out. And you can very much see that line and the way that the shape of the conkers going. So think about the shape and keep looking at it as you're doing your painting. So you're painting and drawing at the same time, um, but very loosely, and it really does help to loosen things up. You'll need to work quite quickly with this because you don't want your colours to dry before you're putting your next colour in. Um, I did end up with it quite wet because you're obviously using quite a lot of water here. You've got all those four colours mixed together by the time you've finished. So if you do find any areas pooling like I do, get a, just take the excess moisture out of your brush and use that dry brush to suck back up some of that colour. I also lifted some of the colour off whilst it was wet just to get some highlights where, where the light is catching the skins of the conker there. Of course, you don't just have to apply this idea to conkers. You could do it with all sorts of things. You could use some things out of the kitchen, some tomatoes, maybe some apples. There are so many things that you can have a go at drawing and painting at this time of year with some lovely shapes, autumn leaves, all your berries and your fruits. And once you've done one, go on and do another one with adding more and more objects. So do lots of a little series of still lives with your autumn fruits, berries, um, leaves, etc. And then gradually build up one that's maybe got three or four things in it and lots more colour and just building it up every time and building your confidence with your drawing. Um, and I do feel that this drawing with the paint first does build your confidence. Just make sure you keep looking back at whatever your subject is, really use your eye um, we draw with our eyes, not with our hands. That's always something worth remembering. What we're doing with our eyes is much more important than what we're doing with our hands. So keep looking, keep looking again and again. And this is the great thing about this when you're combining the two mediums like this, you're actually drawing it twice and you're looking twice and then you can re um, kind of remedy anything the way you've gone wrong because you see more the second time and you see more again the third time. So make a habit of keeping looking back. Don't let your brain fill in the blanks. Don't guess what, what, excuse me, my voice has gone. Don't guess what something looks like. Really observe. To go darker in some areas, as particularly um, on the stems where it's much darker brown, I made a slightly thicker mix. So I took some of the brown that I'd already got um, and I added more pigment to that so that we've got less water and more pigment adding into that wet already very, very wet paint by now. So what's on the paper now is very wet. So you wouldn't want to be adding more water to that. You want to make a thicker mix with more pigment and less water. So I just added more of the brown, more of the red, more of the yellow to make a nice thick mix um, and then pop that in where I could see it was the darkest. After I'd done that, I then took a few colours straight from the pan. So straight from um, the pans on the palette, not mixing it with any water, just with a damp brush, lift, lifting a tiny bit off. I used some yellow and I used some orange because there are some marks on those shells um, in that little orangey colour. I'm not quite sure what they're from. 
it's it's where the little spikes are they're quite orangey and yellow in places and it just lifts the painting a bit it may not pick up to the camera too much um, but it does add to it so you can always come in at the end as long as you're always remembering to go stronger with your paint mixes and less water as you go along if you do have a subject where you've got something crossed like this as you can see those two stalks are crossed really concentrate and make sure you remember which stalk is on the top um, especially when you come to your drawing later on with your pen you, and you can very easily mis make mistakes and go over the wrong line um, so where anything's crossing like that make a mental note of it um, that that's got to be the one on the top and that your line's not going to go straight across that other stem with your ink pen because of course when we're working in ink it's very difficult to rectify to take it off uh, particularly with something like this we can always do that with mixed media we can find something else to cover it up but it's much easier if you don't do it in the first place so just concentrate so you can see here I've put some of that orange in and some of that yellow and like I say it really does lift it just gives it a little bit extra um, nice colors there so the colors aren't completely representative of the conquer that we've got it's just gives us that feel it's a little bit lighter and brighter than the original shell which it can be a little bit dull and um, it's got a bit of shine on it where the the lights going on it um, from the lights above my table here so when it comes to the drawing i'm using the de la Rowney acrylic ink and the color that i'm using is sepia i thought sepia was much more appropriate for the colors of the conquer um, than a black pen but of course you could do it in black if that's what you've got you don't need to use a dip pen either if you've just got um, ordinary drawing pens that's also absolutely fine the nice thing about the dip pen is you get a variety of lines some a little bit thicker some thinner um, and it makes it a little bit more quirky and interesting so try and keep your drawing loose you'll notice that I don't hold my pen very tightly I've not got my pen held right down near the bottom as you would if you were writing a letter I'm holding my pen further back and I haven't got a tight grip on it I've got a very loose grip on it I'm almost pushing the pen around now and again as well rather than pulling it um, and you get more interesting lines get some breaks in the lines as well don't feel you have to outline everything with a very um, neat and joined up line it can be broken and that's going to give the whole thing character you've already got um, your form there with the paint that you've put on and as you can see i've not done a background to this you might want to um, i think as a as an exercise as a drawing and painting exercise it's quite nice just to leave it like this um, as a little still life exercise and like i say you can go on and do some more and it looks quite crisp and nice against the white paper without a background one thing I should have said is to make sure that your paint is completely dry before you start with your ink drawing. It did take quite a long time to dry because we've got those four very loose watery colours to begin with. We've got an awful lot of water on there with those four colours. So it took quite a long time to dry. So I went off and did something else. You can probably tell that by the state of my hands. I've got white paint all over them. I've been painting some of my frame, float frames up ready for framing some of my own work so that's why i've got white hands so i was doing that whilst it dried so make sure it is completely dry before you do your ink drawing so go and have your dinner or come back in the morning whatever it is you want to do whilst that paint dries okay so thank you very very much for watching i'll be back again soon with another tutorial or demonstration in the meantime enjoy your painting and drawing bye bye for now <music>